today I'm going to show you how to do the zipper on the half zip sweater. And I'm just going to go over the zipper part and the binding and hood or collar. I also wanted to do it on a waffle fabric because waffle is known to stretch a lot. And so it sometimes makes it difficult to get like a clean finish, but as you can see, this looks really nice. I mean, it's it looks a little weird on the camera for some reason, but in real life, it looks really good. Um, it's just like weird shadows. Anyway, I used Wander Tape on this and I highly suggest getting that. There's also other um, interfacing or other things you could use, but Wander Tape so far has been my favorite. So I'm gonna show you how I use that on this. I hope this is helpful for some of you and it helps you not be too afraid of zippers because they're really not as bad as you would think. And I would know because I obviously avoided them for three years up until right now. And yeah, let's get started. First, I'm going to add wander tape to my zipper guard. As you add it, make sure that you're not stretching the zipper guard at all. I struggled to get the backing off of the wander tape at first, but I found that leaving a little bit of extra at the end and then ripping it helped me to peel it off a bit easier. Now I'm just going to put it right sides out and stick the wrong sides together and make sure that it's all lined up nicely. Sometimes because this fabric is so stretchy, um, you kind of have to like bunch it to make sure that it's all even, but just, yeah, try to get it nice and straight and even. This step is optional, but I like to serge the zipper guard and also the middle of the front bodice just to finish that off clean. And when you get to the seam, if you're serging it, make sure that the seam is facing down. For this sweater, I ended up using knit binding and used my attachment, but I wanted to show you how woven bias tape works as well. To add woven bias tape, what you're going to want to do is measure the bias tape along the neckline and then trim it. The reason we do that is because sometimes the collar stretches out a little bit as it's sewn to the neckline and we don't want to have bunching later. So then sandwich the collar in between the bias tape and stretch the collar evenly throughout and then top stitch it on. Now it's time for the zipper, yay! Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to open the zipper halfway and then you're going to make sure that it's right side up and then tuck the little extra fabric at the top over, then lay it right on top of your zipper guard, leaving about an inch, and then fold the zipper guard down over the zipper and then clip it in place. And then you're going to continue clipping the zipper down the zipper guard. Okay, now I'm adding water tape to the main fabric and make sure that the seam is pointing down. It doesn't really matter yet, but it's good to just always make sure that it's pointing down so that when we do end up sewing it, it's the right direction. So have it go all the way to the bottom. Again, make sure that your fabric isn't getting stretched out as you're adding it on. As you peel off the water tape, um, fold the little rectangle piece and add it first so that we don't forget it. Hold the collar or head down and then mark the fold. Now we're going to flip the zipper over and put it right sides together with the um, sweater and just make sure it all lines up nicely. Use pins and clips as needed. Make sure you fold the collar over and have it all lined up nicely. Make sure the bias taper binding is a little bit past the seam so that when we top stitch it'll look all nice. Normally you should probably use a zipper foot. I ended up um, switching to my walking foot after making a few of these and I liked it better because it created a better seam allowance for me. If you're newer with zippers, I highly suggest basting it on first and then checking it. That way if you have to unpick something it's a little bit easier. Now zip it up past the seam and mark right where the seam is with a pin or some sort of marking tool. 
then zip it most of the way down and add your water tape. Alright, peel the water tape and then make sure the little square piece is secured on there. Make sure you line up the pin with the seam to make sure that when you zip the zipper up, the collar seam looks even. Okay, now fold the little extra fabric of the zipper over and fold the collar over just like we did last time. And then line up the rest of the fabric with the zipper guard. You might have to bunch it up a little, just make sure it's nice and even on there. We're going to baste the zipper on right where the collar is at first, or the hood, see? Just to make sure that when we zip it up, it looks nice and even. So I'm just doing a basting stitch, and then flipping it out, and then I'm going to zip it up, and just make sure it looks nice and even. And then I'm going to go back and sew the rest on. Okay, it's looking so good and we're almost done with the top part. The rest of it will come together really fast, but I'm only focusing on this part on the video. So now I'm going to use the water tape again for getting the binding or bias tape nicely onto the neckline. So with the seam facing down, I'm going to add the water tape right onto uh, the seam all the way along the neckline. Okay, so peel the water tape off and then stick the bias taper binding onto the water tape. And you want to leave about an eighth of an inch hanging over the edge. That way, after we sew it on, it will just catch the bottom edge of it and it will enclose the unfinished seam. I did notice that with my knit binding, it was a bit thicker on the seam, so I want, I pulled that up just a little bit more as it's going over the seam, so that when I top stitch it, um, it still is able to catch that. As you can see, it just gives a really nice clean finish on both the outside and the inside.